Hey guys, welcome back. Hopefully everyone's doing well and staying safe and healthy during these times. Um, today's video topic is around any point exchanges GraphQL API. And this is actually is around version two, uh, which isn't well documented yet, but it pretty much provides a lot of the same capabilities that we you see within version one of the documentation. Um, during this video today, I'm gonna be leveraging any point exchange, of course, and I'm gonna be using Postman to run some requests against the GraphQL API. So a quick agenda, I'm gonna go ahead and cover GraphQL at a very, very high level. Uh, I'm gonna assume that you guys have some familiarity with the GraphQL API already. Uh, I'm gonna jump into the AnyPoint Exchange and use the graphical interface and interact with the Exchange GraphQL API. And then lastly, I'm gonna jump into Postman and talk about you know different ways to interact with it in that interface as well. So GraphQL is an API query language. Don't think of it as you know a REST API, but think of it as a, a different way to query your systems using uh, this API query language. Uh, it's generally served over a single HTTP endpoint. So instead of you know in REST where you call specific endpoints based off of those resources, you build a query uh, within GraphQL and pass that to the GraphQL a API and it will go and introspect and pull back data um, you know, based off that query that you have around those specific resources and return that back generally in JSON. So uh, we have this GraphQL that's wrapped around the Exchange API uh, or the Exchange platform uh, that gives you the capabilities uh, that are offered through GraphQL. So let's go ahead now and switch over to Anypoint Exchange uh, and look at these APIs. So what we're looking at here, of course, is the Anypoint Exchange. This is the, the main portal where developers can search for connectors, templates, APIs, um, anything that we provide, as well as content that you as an organization create and publish into the Exchange to share with your developers uh, to be reused within their integrations and APIs. Okay. Um, and similar to the, the, the entire AnyPoint platform, we have REST APIs written for different capabilities or different uh, areas of the platform. Of course, there's the REST API for the AnyPoint Exchange. And the REST API, you can see in the documentation, you know, allows you to search uh, on specific resources and specific endpoints um, through the REST interface, right? And this allows you to build interfaces and pull this data into you know, external portals you know, uh, or different platforms. Uh, and also allow you to push stuff programmatically into the exchange to be published and shared out with your end users. The other side of this, of course, is the GraphQL API. So the GraphQL, if you search within our documentation, you can read up a little bit more on the Graph API, uh, but I'll be covering, the, uh, covering this again within the video today. So um, the documentation refers to V1 of the GraphQL API, but I'm going to be going ahead and showing you an interface into V2 of the GraphQL API that we have available. So within your browser, if you go to anypoint.mulesoft.com forward slash graph, forward slash API, forward slash V2, forward slash GraphQL, it's actually going to bring up the graphical interface. Uh, this is a, a IDE for a graph API. Uh, it's very similar to what we provide today within our REST APIs with the API Kit Console, right? It's an interface that allows you as a developer to actually test out the API, uh, build queries, and, and see what that result set will look like when you run those specific queries against that GraphQL API, okay? So let's go ahead now and jump into Graphical uh, and talk about how we can build a query to run against the AnyPoint Exchange GraphQL API. So. Within Graphical, um, over here on the right is a link to the documentation. This actually shows you as a developer, you know, testing against this GraphQL, what are the available uh, query uh, fields that you can use to run against this GraphQL API. So you can see here, uh, we allow you to run a query and pull back a list of assets with these specific fields and data types, okay? Over here on the left is the script editor. This is where you as a, a developer is gonna go ahead and write that script based off the documentation, right? So we're gonna start off first and say that we wanna search across either, and if you use asset, it's gonna return back a single asset. If you click um, on assets, it's gonna return back a set of assets based off of criteria that you pass into this filter, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, pull in the, 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 the brackets here and put space here. Uh, let's go ahead and search on a search term, we'll say Salesforce. And then we'll want to say that we want to return back uh, a list of 
of assets based off of certain types. We'll say connector and also extension. And additionally, we want to limit the result set to only return back uh, 10 records. And then as you can see, if you click on control space, on your keyboard, it's going to show you all the available fields that you can search on. So you can search by uh, min mule ver min minimum mule version by category by tag if it's public or not uh, but we'll leave the, the query criteria as these three only and then additionally after the query uh, we want to also put in what we want returned back from the any point exchange graphql api so uh, if you again if you hit control space on the keyboard it's going to show you all the available fields that you can return back from uh, this GraphQL API. So in this case, let's go ahead and return back the name. Uh, we'll also do the description. Uh, we'll do the icon. And then we'll also do type. Okay. And then up here in the top, if we go ahead and click on the run button, it's going to go ahead and run that query against the GraphQL API and return back that list of assets um, that meet these criteria that you've, you've put into the script. Okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and switch over to Postman now uh, and talk about how we can authenticate the user um, that's going to be making a request to be pulling back content from a private exchange. So let's go ahead and switch over to Postman here. Okay, so within Postman, um, what you're going to need to do first is make a request to the login endpoint to get the bearer access token. So um, in a previous blog post, if you can search for, you can find um, how you can set up Postman to work against the endpoint platform APIs um, to run that request against this specific endpoint, anypoint.mulesoft.com. It's a post request against that login endpoint, and then you give it your username and password in the body. And as a result, it's gonna return back the access token. And we'll need to copy and paste this later on into the next request. So in the next request, right, this is the GraphQL endpoint, and it's gonna be a post request as well. And we've gone ahead and copy and pasted the query um, that we built within GraphQL in here. And you can see one of the benefits of using Postman is that you can actually build a GraphQL endpoint uh, within this interface. Um, if you don't use that graphical endpoint, you can actually build a JSON request, but you need to keep in mind that it has to be in the following format of curly bracket, query, and then the, the query has to be a string in a single line, and that you also need to escape the double quotes when you when you paste it in the query. So it's a little more complicated. That's generally why I just use the, the, the built-in GraphQL interface here and just paste in the query uh, that I got from graphical. And then we can run a request, and you can see that it returns back you know, 10 connectors uh, and extensions from the, the public exchange. So with the uh, token that we generated over here, uh, actually, uh, before I do that, uh, we, we wanna go ahead and modify the query and paste in the organization ID um, tag in here, right? In this case, once we paste this in here and we run the query again, it's gonna go ahead and return back zero assets, right? Because it's gonna search against a private organization ID exchange for you know, uh, connectors uh, within that private exchange. So in order to return back data for that private exchange, we need to get the access token that we just generated from the login request. And in that request, we're gonna go ahead and click on the authorization tab, change it to bearer token and paste in that access token and when we click on send, it's gonna go ahead now and return back um, you know, data from that private exchange that's relevant to that, that search query that we just built, okay? Okay, so in closing, hopefully this video today gave you a good understanding of different ways to search for content across exchange. You of course have out of the box the AnyPoint platform exchange interface that allows you to graphically search across content, um, both provided by MuleSoft as well as content that your teams have created and published into the exchange. We have the REST APIs. Uh, the REST APIs, again, are wrapped around the entire platform. So it's not just for Exchange, but you know there are different areas of the platform that we provide REST APIs that allow you to interact with the platform and tie that into your own ecosystem. And then the last one, which was, of course, the main focus of this video today, is the GraphQL API, right? It's a, it provides a GraphQL interface on top of the endpoint Exchange and gives you a way to quickly search across all the different assets and then you know modify that query based off of different fields that you want returned back from your search results okay 
Um, if you have, run, have any questions or run into any issues, don't hesitate to leave a comment below. Uh, be sure to subscribe and like my videos. Uh, and thanks for watching.